Hey everybody, we have an Epson, it's a home cinema 3010, uh, chassis number H421A. The uh, HC3010 is a uh, LCD projector made by Epson, as I said. It's a 2200 lumen LCD projector. It does have an auto iris, which then gives it a uh, 40,000 to 1 contrast ratio. So it's a, it's a decent home theater projector. It uses a 230 watt lamp and that lamp was failing and when the new lamp was put in they were getting a lot of uh, weird looking colors which in an LCD usually means dust and you can probably see it just around the lens there how much and the guy who owns this lives out in the country. It's just uh, it's a good environment for dust. So the projector works. We're just going to give it a good internal cleaning. So the first thing we need to do is get the bracket off. And the installer who brought it in to me is going to need to readjust this anyway. But... I think what I might do, I'm going to use a dry erase marker, is I'm going to mark this one and that spot, so I know that's where that goes back to. It'll help them out a little bit. Now we'll get the bracket out of the way. Then, let's take the lamp out. Lamp goes in the side, or I guess the, uh, the bottom when it's ceiling mounted. That's a captive screw. The door just slides back and lifts up. You can see there's some uh, evidence of heat and some dust. I believe this is the new lamp. Let's see though. There we go. And this is the old lamp, I think. Or, there we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is, uh, what is this? Oh, this is some cruddy, non-standard lamp. See that flap? This is why you got to watch where you get your lamps. This should flip back and forth nice and evenly, and it doesn't. Because when the projector is mounted one way, the air is going to go in and blow on the uh, inside. And then if it's the other way, it's got to blow through a different hole. But if this flap doesn't move, then it's not going to cool it right. So I'm definitely going to let him know. You can also tell this is a uh, kind of a junk lamp because of the bulb that's in there. It looks like it's just some no-name. It's not a, one of the good Osram replacements. Yeah, it's just some cheap no-name. I'm going to let him know that this lamp is junk. And I'm looking inside. I can see definite... Evidence of heat, the way the plastic turned kind of gray down there, it's not good. So next step is to open it up. And slide the filter out, which filter looks pretty clean, which is weird. I expect to see it a lot dirtier. Maybe it's a lamp that's causing the problem.
down here. Finally got that one. And then just got one in the back. And that should now release the top. Something. Oh, yeah. And I got these two. All right, and then over there, you can see the keyboard connection. Disconnect that. And then the uh, keystone adjustment. And I can see all this dust just being everywhere over there. So let's uh, let's see. Wow, yeah. This thing's got some debris in it. Wow, this thing's been needing a good cleaning for a while. All right, now let's disconnect the LCD panels. They have these uh, locking ZIF connectors. So I want to take the motherboard out so that we can really get inside the optical block and clean it out because I just see chunks of dust falling out. And we'll go around and unplug. I don't usually mark these because they only fit in one place, fortunately. I'm going to try and leave these in and just fold the board over, you know, just kind of go this way. But we'll need to unplug those and probably the back panel. Yeah, actually, I'm going to do that first. Yeah, chunks of dust are just falling out. All right, back is loose. sure if I also need to take these out or not. I know here I do. Uh, actually, I probably do. Is that whole thing going to move? No. All right. It still might need to come out, but let's see. 
All right, it's a good sign. So very carefully, gently, I'm gonna lift, paying attention to wires and brackets, and just fold it over, just like that. And now we can get to where I want, which is this thing. I want to pull that out. And let's. Do I have to remove this? Wow. Then Just want to take the optic block out. But it doesn't look like I can just take it out. So I want to take just this out. This thing right here. Usually there's two screws, but in this case it looks like the whole the whole assembly might have to lift out. Yeah, because the screw, you'll see what I mean. So we're just going to take the whole uh, optic assembly out. It should come out in just one big happy piece. Oh yeah. Now the front has to technically come off, but it looks like if I take this screw and then lift that catch and this catch, it should, oh yeah, it slides forward just enough to lift it out. And people wonder why their pictures look weird after a bit. <laughs> That's pretty bad. So I'll go to this second because I want to clean out these air ducts. These blow air up into the LCD. So I'm going to want to force some air back through those to make sure the fans are clear without having to tear it all apart. Just gonna fold the main board back over for now. And let's lay that there. And I'll put that on the cart so I can go clean it. And there's the optic module. So I'm pretty sure we're going to find a reasonable amount of dust down inside there. There's supposed to be air coming up through here, keeping it clean, but I can see. Here, I'll see if I can. Uh, you can't really tell, I guess, but uh, maybe. Let me zoom in. So these are all full of dust. 
nice fine layer. So to take that out, to me, it looks like I had to take that screw and then the corresponding screw on the other side. I think I just have to loosen them. Try taking them all the way out. Or I could just clean it all put together. Yeah, you know what? Rather than take a chance of misaligning something, I'm going to clean it just like this. Just get some air and cotton swabs in the right spot and we should be in good shape. I'll be right back. And we're all clean. I'll show you... Uh, <clears throat> kind of how it works. There is a, a bunch of glass inside with dichroic coatings to split the light up. If I shine my flashlight in, you can see the LCD panel is glowing blue, green, and red. You know, if you look from left to right. And that is just from my flashlight shining through there. So that's in good shape. Uh, next step is putting it back in the projector. So let me go get that. All right, so that's all clean. Let's carefully move this again. And this little uh, duct, this moves air. There's a filter, goes in over here. All right. So let's get the optic module and make sure the wires are out of the way. This is the iris assembly here. This is how it gets that 40,000 to 1 contrast ratio. You can see the shutters in there. I don't have a manual way to move them, but you can see right here. There they are. They're on gears, so I can't push them. But these will open and close to uh, control the light. All right. I don't like that. When it wants to go back into place. And set this back down. One more in this back. There we go. Okay, so I am going to reassemble the rest of it off camera. 
uh, because it's just a little difficult to do while I'm on camera. So I'll be right back when we get to reconnecting the wires. And the rest of the cables are installed. So now it's time to put these guys back in. You can see they're kind of double row. Kind of like an old AGP connector. So you just make sure they go in all the way. And then that'll snap right down. So that's the blue, this is the green, and then to the left is the red. And with those three colors, you can recreate all the other colors that you need when you're using LCD technology. All right, throw back in, that's good. The uh, junk lamp. Let's uh, put Mr. Junk Lamp in and just make sure it turns on because there still might be other things wrong with it. Now that it's clean, any other video issues we see, we can attribute to possibly the lamp or optical alignment, something like that. We need to bypass that switch temporarily. So I use a uh, really small flathead that I gently, ever so carefully wedge in between the edge of the switch and the uh, button itself. You can see what I'm doing there. It's just enough to hold it down. I, I like this method because if something's wrong and I need to kill it really fast, and that'll shut it right down. So all I do, push it down and just barely I can't do it one-handed. Let me just barely wedge it in there just a little bit. Just enough so it stays. Alright, so zoom that back out. And uh, let's get some power. Oh, I need the filter. There's a switch, I think. Oh, no, I don't see one. Yeah, we'll put it in anyway. It's good for testing. Power. And we need to reconnect the uh, upper. Oh, I gotta clean the upper cover. Be right back. All right, so now we want to plug in the keyboard and then we're going to try it out. All right, so that's connected. Let's turn the power on. Let's see, yep, 112 volts. Power's low over here. That always bothers me. And power. Nothing. Hmm. Oh, I guess I forgot the ballast control. That'd be helpful. There we go. Lamp came on. You can hear the iris moving. You can hear that grumbling. I have a, just a piece of paper out here. You can sort of see it on. That means everything's coming on, so we need to go out to the uh, area where I can really get a bigger image and hook it up to a signal. But everything's coming on, so that's good. I'm going to put the back panel on. I'm just not going to put the last bit of screws in. 
and let it cool down and uh, when I come back we will be set up by the screen. Alright, we're back out on the big bench. I've got a uh, VGA signal coming off of a computer. Let's see. This box out of the way. All right. So we can fix that keystone. Let's get it big. That looks a lot better. I guess you could see it. Of course, it's inverted because of. Uh, the way it's set up, but let me see. Find a better. We'll go with the scrolling one. I'm going to turn the lights off. All right, see that's nice. That's what we want to see. Of course, it would be straight if I had the camera straight. And so we get a couple pictures. Before there was all kinds of ghosting, and it just it didn't look good. This looks a lot better. Try to get that keystone a little better. All right, well I'm happy with this. Uh, we're going to call this good to go. I am going to let um, the installer know who I clean this for, that um, he should get a better lamp first off, and then secondly, he can put it back in. So aside from that, that's really all there is to it. If you guys have any questions, you know, put them in the comments. If, uh, if you haven't subscribed, do me a favor and click that. And uh, if you have any questions about anything your projector, um, feel free to hit my email in the profile or leave it in the comments section. And uh, as always, thank you for watching.